Hello everybody and welcome to part 5 in this Lua tutorial series. Now in this tutorial we're going to be taking a look at tables. Now at first tables may seem pointless, they may not make much sense but they are very important and you'll see why in, uh, in future videos. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead, we're going to open up Sublime. Uh, this is the files we was working in the previous tutorials. Uh, remember io.read needs to be there guys. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and open up Photoshop and uh, I did make this somewhere, uh, just excuse me, here we go. So basically I'm going to try my best to describe what a table is. Um, so you remember how before I said uh, a way to, to visualize a variable is imagine a box, okay? And you could store a number in that box, okay? Now imagine a table as a really large box with lots of smaller boxes in them. Each one of these smaller boxes can hold a number, right? There's as many of these smaller boxes as you want and each number has a unique ID, like one, two, and three, okay? Now, that is basically a table and the, the point of tables is they're, they're really good ways to organize data um, in, your, in your script. So if you have large amounts of data, such as um, I don't know why you would do this, but you wanted to store the color of each individual pixel on your screen. You would store that in something like a table. So let's go ahead and get started on how we make a table. So to make a table, a table is a data type. So it's just like making a variable. We can make a variable called test. And when we set it equal to, we're going to set it equal to these two brackets. Now this tells Lua that we're creating an empty table. So it knows that it's a table, but the table has no data. Now, you remember how I said there's these boxes and each box has a unique ID? Well, the way how you access those boxes is by simply typing the variable name, which in this case is test, followed by square brackets, okay? And in here, inside the square brackets, you enter the ID or the, oh yeah, ID of the index or element that you try and access. So in this case, I'm going to put in one here and that's it. I've now referenced that variable so I could say equals 10, right? And then I've gone into, say this table is called test. I've gone into this table. I've gone into box one. And in here, I have put the value 10 into this box, right? And that is pretty much it. Uh, I can do this as many times as I want to different elements. Like in element two, I could put 1337. And then I can do print. And I can print test one. And I could do print test 2 right this will work so if we go ahead and run our script right now as you can see 10 and 1337 so that is how a table works and a table is is very useful but we're going to look at some some more important things about tables one of these things is that you don't have to create a table like this you can do it directly in here and do this right now the way how this works is in element 1 or index 1 it's going to hold the value 10 and in index 2 it's going to hold the value 1337 okay so if we go ahead and run this program now how it is you'll notice that we get the exact same result as before we just created it differently now there is other ways to initialize tables too but i want to just note one more thing okay and that is when you are accessing the specific id we set this equal to 10 just like variables if we access the same element and we said it's 20, we're going to be overriding that value, right? And one more thing about uh, table names is that they don't have to be numbers. They could be any number you want, right? But they don't have to be a number. They can be, whoops, they can be a string, okay? And then whenever you reference that, so if we set that to that, whenever we want to reference the table, instead of accessing index 1, we're going to access index string, okay? And that, that will go to this same variable just to show you that. If I go ahead and run it now, as you can see, it still prints at 10. Now, it's advised not to use strings um, because accessing a table of strings is a bit slower than accessing a table by a number. Um, but it is here if you need it. Um, and that pretty much wraps up tables, except well, I, will, I will say one more thing. This might get a little confusing to you at first, but a table... So say we went into the table test and we went into the element one. 
a table can store another table. So we could do that. And then we could say test one, one is equal to one and then test one, two. Okay. Now, visually what's going on here is just like how we have uh, all of these boxes here, right? Imagine we have another box here. This is index one, right? Well, what we did is inside this box, we created more little boxes. That's pretty much what it's like um, to have a table inside of a table. And you, you will be doing this. Um, but yeah, so that, that's pretty much it right now um, for tables. Now, I know this is quite a short video, but in the next one, I'll be teaching you about loops and how you can use loops with tables to store, manipulate, or do whatever you want with large amounts of data. So again, as always, thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, be sure to leave a comment. And, uh, I'll see you in the next video.